This week, I've been driving another Volvo. This is the 2023 S60 Recharge Ultimate Black Edition. It's a plug-in hybrid, and it's probably my favorite plug-in hybrid on sale today. It just drives so well. We're gonna walk you around this, show you what it looks like inside and out. We'll take it for a drive and talk about my experience with this car this week. First, let's fire it up and we'll go over some basics. So 455 horsepower, 523 pound-feet of torque from a two liter turbocharged four cylinder. They've ditched the supercharger. We just have a turbocharged unit and we have a higher capacity battery and a more powerful rear electric motor. 143 horsepower from that rear electric motor. So when this is in EV mode, it's actually a rear wheel drive, which is pretty cool. We can go 40 miles on a full electric charge. I think most people probably drive around 40 miles a day, if that. So chances are you can almost use this as a pure strict EV. A few updates for the 23 model year. We now have an Android based OS for our infotainment. So we have Google Maps native and uh, we have some different drive mode screens here. They've gotten rid of some physical buttons, which I don't love, but it's livable, it's usable. We'll go over that in a minute here. First, let's, let's hop outside and show you what this black edition looks like, because it's pretty sharp. Our key fob, we'll leave that in here so the car doesn't beep away at me. Nice, this car looks so good when it's clean. Run a set of 19 inch Pirelli P0 all seasons, 235 40 R19s. The black edition gives you a blacked out grill, badges, black headliner. I think it looks really sharp. Let's start in the back. We'll take a look in the trunk. No spare tire. There's a pretty high floor here to accommodate the rear electric motor, batteries, all that stuff. Decent sized trunk though, 60-40 folding rear seats with a pass-through for your skis if you so choose. You can see the blacked out S60 Volvo badges right here. Back seat space, and this car is actually pretty decent for the right and left rear passengers. That center area has a pretty high bump to accommodate that larger capacity battery. We get an armrest with some cup holders. The front driver's seat is set to my driving position. I'm five foot 10 and I have plenty of room in here to stretch out about an inch and a half or so of headroom. Nice, comfortable, well-appointed space. We get a Bowers and Wilkins sound system, which is just the best in the business. Love the materials, love the design and simplicity of this interior. Good visibility, smells good. Something that definitely doesn't come through on camera. Heated rear seats. Two USB-C ports right there. Let's pop the hood and then we'll show you around the interior just a bit and then take this for a drive. Oh, before we do that, here's the charge port. Love this, no cover. You just open it up, plug it in and you can charge this very easily throughout the day or overnight. Two liter turbocharged four cylinder. This makes 314 or 312 horsepower on its own. I believe it's 312. And on its own, it gets about 31 miles to the gallon. So it's reasonably efficient. This week I've averaged about 50 to 60 MPG in this, depending on what I'm doing, where I'm driving. This hood is super high, kind of hard to reach. <laughs> This engine is a little bit more refined, a little bit quieter than it was in previous generations. Um, sounds nice too. It's got kind of an aggressive guttural growl to it. That is, if it ever even turns on for you. Chances are you're gonna be driving this car mostly in EV mode. Love the integration of these Ford sensors here with the Volvo badge. This grill just looks so menacing. People have been getting out of my way on the highway all week in this car. It's just been a pleasure to drive. Okay, front seat, infotainment, interior updates, and then we'll go drive it. So we get a fully digital gauge cluster and a head-up display, which shows us some useful information. 
this is a pretty simple cluster. Not a whole lot you can change. You can see your trip, you can reset things, you can see your MPG, um, how much range you have left with the battery, how much range you have left with your fuel, and then you've got this view here that shows you whether you're dipping into gasoline power or battery power. And we have a few different drive modes. So we have hybrid, power, pure, which is EV mode, pure is EV, and constant all-wheel drive. You can opt to always start the vehicle in pure mode, which is kind of cool. And you can have automatic battery usage. You can hold the battery for later use. Say if you're doing a bunch of highway driving, then you're going to be in the city, you can do that. Or you can set the engine to charge the battery, which it actually does pretty quickly. You also have a few more settings in here. You can turn on steering assist with pilot assist, adaptive cruise control, lane centering, all that stuff. Turn on lane keeping aid, creep. I have this car set up to one pedal drive, which has been really nice. You put it into B mode and you just let off. And honestly, this S60 does one pedal driving better than a lot of EVs out there. So really strong regen, really smooth, well-tuned, comes to a stop nice and smoothly. I love it. You can also set it up to creep forward like a normal car would too, if that's your thing. CarPlay, finally, in these Volvos. Uh, connects well, no issues there, no hiccups. Responsive, fast. Overall, this new infotainment is a little bit quicker and more responsive. And I really like using Google Maps in this. It's cool because it corresponds with the car. So let's say you're, you're routing 60 miles away. Some of it is highway, some of it is city driving. The Google Maps system is gonna talk to the drivetrain and the vehicle and it's gonna figure out the most efficient way to kind of set your powertrain settings. So on the highway, it's gonna mostly utilize gasoline power because that's more efficient. You're gonna burn up all your battery on the highway otherwise. And then when you go in the city, depending on your route, it'll prioritize EV driving, which is just so cool. I set a bunch of destinations through the native Google Maps system this week, and every time it just made the right decisions. It was really nice to just kind of set it and forget it. So I honestly haven't been using CarPlay that much. Of course, Google Voice, all that stuff, it works really well. My only complaint with this infotainment is that they've gotten rid of some physical buttons for drive mode, stuff like that. But honestly, after living with this for a week, it's not as big of a deal. I do wish we had a way to switch between steering assist and just a regular adaptive cruise control without steering assist with the press of a button. Volvo has gotten rid of these buttons. Like they just, they literally don't do anything anymore. You press them and you used to be able to switch between pilot assist and uh, adaptive and that's not the case anymore. You have to go into this menu. But again, not a huge deal. One thing I really like too is that you can see Google Maps in this digital gauge cluster. So you can either have a minimalist display or you can have it set up there and it'll show you a route and everything, all the information you need. And it'll give you directions in the head up display as well. Otherwise, controls in here are pretty straightforward. All of Volvo interiors are pretty much the same these days. We get cup holders parking brakes right here, stop start toggle switches right there, a little bit of storage for your phone in the middle. There isn't a ton of storage and places to put things. Uh, these cup holders are pretty small. This area in here is kind of tight. So, you know, you're a little bit limited. You've got some storage right here in the door pockets, but there's not a lot of space to put stuff. These seats are super comfortable. They're about as comfortable as they look and uh, they look really good. Little panoramic sunroof up there. Visors do not slide. So you're missing a little bit of coverage in the corner there. Nice looking frameless mirror. The sunroof is interesting. It's a touch operation. It takes a bit of getting used to, but once you do, you pretty much know what to do. There it is sliding back. Interior lighting is nice and bright. This is a beautiful car at night. We'll show you guys the reverse camera. Pretty wide angle. I do wish they had kind of a reverse 360 cam split instead you just get parking sensors at the top, which I guess is fine. And then there's your 360 cam. You can choose different sides. You can choose wheel guidelines, brightness, all that stuff. That's nice, I guess. And then in this menu here. They've just gone through and simplified this whole infotainment. You've got kind of a list of all of your apps. Climate control buttons. Honestly, they're a little small, or climate control icons rather, 
They're a little small, they're a little bit difficult to accurately press when you're on the go. And that goes for a lot of the menu selections in this car. Everything's just a little bit tiny. I wouldn't mind a larger screen with some slightly larger text and selection options. When you're on the go and your hands are moving around, you're going over bumps, some of the stuff is a little bit difficult to select. But, I mean, most of it you can just kind of set it in automatic mode and it's fine. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about. We've got two seat memory settings, auto up down windows in all four corners. Let's go drive. We'll start off in B mode and do one pedal driving. We have a heated steering wheel, heated seats. The heat level for the steering wheel is just perfect. Not too hot, doesn't singe your hands off, and you have one of three adjustments that you can select. Haven't touched the brake pedal yet. We'll let these cars go by. And we are in hybrid mode. So the gasoline engine will kick in if we want more power. And that transition is seamless. I like how the speedometer updates very quickly too. No skipping speeds in this. So actually, let's start off this video driving in pure mode. We're just gonna go full EV. The nice thing about this mode is if you do ever request more power, you can just push through the kick down switch on the accelerator pedal and the engine will kick on. But as it sits, the 143 horsepower from that rear electric motor, I think is ample for driving this car around on a regular basis through normal use. I'll give you guys a little taste of acceleration here. Getting up to speed, no problem. It's interesting, well, this car has so much performance, so much straight line acceleration, but its top speed is limited to 114 miles per hour. Volvo kind of made a decision a few years ago to do that along all their models, and it doesn't bother me too much. I don't like to drive too fast on the highway, but I think uh, it could, could be a deal breaker for some, but up until 114 miles per hour, this thing is really, really quick. Let's try to negotiate a pass here. Again, we're still in pure mode. So you can see here, in pure mode, on the highway. Let's accelerate up this hill. No problem getting up to speed, making a pass. Adaptive cruise control works super well on this car. I have left steering assist off this week. It's a, it's a, bit, it's a bit temperamental. I'll have my hands on the steering wheel and it'll just constantly be prompting me to put my hands on the steering wheel, even though I'm putting a little bit of torque on the wheel. So I've opted to keep that off and I'll turn it on if I need it. That said though, adaptive cruise works great. You can easily change your following distance. You can skip five mile an hour increments with a single press of the plus minus buttons. Handling. This is no Polestar but it has a good amount of mechanical grip. Suspension's a little bit softer. It definitely defaults to some safe understeer, and that's okay. It still, I think, is a chassis tuned for more spirited driving, but it maintains really nice ride quality. Not floaty over bumps, but not too firm. It's just a really nice balance. Again, haven't touched the brake pedal yet. All regen, except for maybe on that entrance ramp. Let's go into hybrid mode, and we'll show you guys the transitions here uh, between hybrid and gasoline power. We also enable steering feel firm. That weights up the steering just a bit more. The steering's really nice and light in its default mode. All right, so we know we can drive this around in pure EV mode, no problem now. That's so great to have some power in this S60 and with these new Volvo plug-in hybrid powertrains. How does it accelerate in hybrid mode? Well, 
it's properly quick. 455 horsepower. This is the most powerful production Volvo ever produced. Encroaching upon Polestar territory here. Let's even try power mode. The gauge cluster will change. You'll get a tachometer. No paddle shifters, unfortunately. That's okay. This automatic transmission does a really nice job making its own gear selections. And I'm really surprised and very impressed with how smooth this drivetrain is. Not a hiccup, not a blip, not a issue with a shift all week. It's smooth, it's torquey, there's just so much power here and it's all on tap immediately. Even if you're just cruising around in EV mode, the time that it takes for the engine to turn on, match revs, it's all very nice. It's within a second or so. Wind noise, NVH on the highway, it's definitely an improvement. Volvos used to have some cabin noise over bumps. A lot of intrusion, a lot of reverberation. This is this new generation of Volvo products is such an improvement on that. Speaking of sound, it seems like a good opportunity to test out our Bowers and Wilkins sound system. So let's go in and do a quick test. stage or room. Adjustability with the soundscapes is just, it's awesome. It's such a great experience. Sitting in this car, driving, listening to your favorite music. I think Volvo and Acura have done the best jobs of bringing hi-fi into the driving experience. And this Bowers and Wilkins is top-notch. One of the best, if not the best, sound systems in a car. And it's consistent across the whole lineup. It's not like some Volvos have better Bowers and Wilkins systems than other Volvos. They're just all really good across the board, and this S60 is no exception. All right, let's dip into the brake pedal here, slow us down a bit more. Feels very normal, very natural, easy to modulate. Nice firm pedal. If you haven't noticed already, in the digital display, there's this little transition point between electricity and gasoline. And you can very easily stay below that little gasoline drop, but it'll show you when you switch into gasoline engine mode. And it's just cool to have that little graphic just so you can kind of keep your throttle level below that and stay in hybrid mode or stay in EV mode. Let's do another acceleration test in pure mode and show you guys what that's like at full throttle here. There's so much power in pure mode that sometimes you get a little bit of inside rear wheel spin going around a corner. There you 
go. Stability control kicked in briefly. It's not tons of acceleration, but it's enough to get up to speed. And I find myself not having to go flat out everywhere. Finally, we get a usable amount of power in pure EV with these Volvos. And I think you combine that with the extra range and the smoothness and refinement from this drivetrain, and it makes for the best driving plug-in hybrid powertrain I think I, I've experienced. Could always do with more range, could always do with more power, but this is just such a nice balance and it's such a comfortable car to live with on a daily basis. Let's show you guys what it looks like to route to a destination with Google Maps. Just head back towards downtown Plymouth. You can see that displayed here in the digital gauge and we'll see some directions with the head-up display too. I've also found electric driving range estimates to be pretty good with this car this week. So that's been nice. Let's test some handling here. Definitely limited with these tires. <laughs> Stability control, kind of holding back there a little bit, not getting too in the way. I like that. Definitely some safe understeer at the limit. And you're never lacking in power. When you put this in drive and you just want to coast, this Volvo will just coast for what seems like forever. I do really like driving in a B mode though. It kind of makes this, there's a center point for the throttle and it's really well calibrated, really well tuned. Volvo, I think, spent a lot of effort kind of perfecting that, that balance with one pedal drive in this car and they've done a really good job with it. Some cars like the Mustang Mach-E, they've struggled a little bit coming to a smooth stop. I feel like the Polestars and the, uh, the XC40, the C40 pure electric cars have done a pretty good job with that. But this S60, this, this new plug-in hybrid powertrain, the regen, the one pedal drive is just almost perfect. I love it. Yeah, I've gotten 55.9 miles to the gallon in this car this week, and I've done a lot of unnecessary gasoline engine driving. So I think if you were experiencing this on a daily basis, depending on your commute, depending on your driving needs, you could pretty much drive this as a full EV the majority, if not all of the time. And when you need that gasoline engine on a longer road trip, it's there for you. You've got tons of range in this car. So, final thoughts. Volvo's knocked out their new plug-in hybrid powertrains out of the park. They are just so good to drive, so good to live with, so good to experience. The level and the combination of power, performance, luxury, features, quality in these new cars is kind of unrivaled in the luxury vehicle space right now. It's Volvo is just doing some really good stuff. I love their design. It's a formula that's, you know, 94% perfect. No car is perfect, but I think Volvo does it the best. The Polestar options definitely have some more performance, some better handling capabilities. I find them personally to be a little bit too stiff, but if you want that extra flair, that extra style, that extra flavor, an extra edge, I think it's a good way to go. Personally, I'd save a bit of money and I'd go for the more comfortable ultimate or lower trim that still gets you the plug-in hybrid powertrain. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be a wrap for this video. Thanks again for watching. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments. We're also now live streaming on Twitch. So if you're interested in checking that out, go follow us. I'll put a link in the description. We did an early live stream on this Volvo S60 a couple weeks ago, just getting some first impressions. That's with uh, me and Substitute Topher together. So you also get some exclusive face reveals 
and we are uploading all the previous live streams on the YouTube channel, and that's available exclusively to channel members. So if you're interested in checking those out after they expire on Twitch, you can uh, join the channel membership and see everything that we upload. We've got about five or six of them up already, probably by the time this video goes live. So really impressed with this S60 this week. Uh, this has been just a phenomenal daily driver. One thing that Substitute Tover and I really agree on is that I think if we had to have one vehicle as like the perfect daily at any price, it would probably be a Volvo plug-in hybrid. These cars just offer such great value, especially with these new 2023 models offering more range, more power, better battery capacity. Um, it's just a really, really nice package. So anyway, again, that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. We'll walk you around this again one more time, and that'll be a wrap. Thank <laughs> you.